Scott. Call the meeting in order. Roll call, please. Roa. Here. Donahue. Here. Battaglia. Here. Angela Bittner. Here. Stearns. Here. Um, if you would please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Wow. About <laughs> fatter, guys. We need more room. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you have a cell phone, iPhone, iWatch, if you would please mute it, I'll try to remind you again the meeting to turn it back on. And meeting notice is Marianne. I'm me. Your, your Honor, can I just, I'll just, I'm just introducing new faces here. Liz Spat, of course, here this evening uh, from the Schaefer Law Firm. Gary Lizio is on vacation and she's pinch hitting. And Katie Wicker, the new uh, Deputy City Clerk, is on vacation as well. Um, and so Marianne's back in the role of administering tonight's meeting for us. Um, and then just two items on your agenda under communications. You did not receive this. This is a letter we received today from Porter Consulting Engineers about a permit. Um, and then there is also under new business a new resolution to award a bid. Um, we have had a bid opening yesterday that wasn't on my radar screen for action tonight. Now I'll, I'll talk about that. I just wanted to point those out on the agenda that are new this evening. Oh. Elizabeth, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, Mary Ann, meeting notices? On May 15, 2019, an executive session was held to discuss real estate and litigation. On May 29, 2019, an executive session was held to discuss personnel. And on June 5, 2019, an executive session was held to discuss litigation and real estate. Okay. Approving minutes for May 15th and June 6th. So Need a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Roll. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Battaglia. Aye. Mangel Hi. Stearns. Aye. Invitation for the audience. Andy, do we have anybody signed up to want to speak? <coughs> Excuse me, or no one has signed in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Andy, manager's report. Um, I'll be glad to give that to your honor. I don't know. Um, Phil is here from Penco Tool. I know on our agenda this evening is a approval of a subdivision. I don't know if you'd want to go do that first just to a company I accommodate Phil or not, or do you want me to give my report first? Your pleasure. Council, are you please go ahead and oh. go ahead. Yeah. Do you want to do that in the new business carrier to introduce the subdivision? All right. Now? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Weather got nice out. Uh, Phil's got back. things to do, don't you? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's not. Okay. Uh, supposed to rain. Take advantage of it. It's going to rain. Yeah, there you go. I just want you to turn that. So there is a copy in your packet. There's a copy of a resolution. And Mary, why don't you read the resolution and then while Gary's teeing up for discussion. Resolved by the Council of the City of Meadville that whereas in accordance with the provisions of section 1359.02 of Article 1359, the land subdivision regulations of the Meadville Municipal Code, the final plat for Penco Tool Subdivision Minor Subdivision submitted to the city as prepared by Courtney and Knapp Land Surveying, surveying Registered Surveyor involving City Lot Number 3600-03-A-7, 3600-031-A-14, and 3600-031-A-15 hereby one approved and two approved for recording. No public improvement guarantee is required because there is no public improvements planned or required by the said land subdivision regulations. Said approval is given contingent upon the requirement that consolidation of the subject parcels as described in the plat must be completed within 90 days of the recording of the subdivision or prior to sale of the lot independent of the res residual or parent lot or approval will be revoked and the subdivision shall be null and void. This language shall be included on the subdivision plat and shall be subject to approval by the city solicitor. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Andy? I'll turn it over to Gary, who is having technical difficulties. It's not going to come up on the screen, but you do have it in your packet. Um, this involves the, primarily the parcel at the Northwest corner of Bessemer Street and Mead Avenue, the former Dr. Beretta, Dr. Decker medical office building. Um, there's a, the, and then Penco tool is to the west. Um, so the subdivision act is actually a, roughly the western third of the um, Beretta property, uh, which you'll see on your subdivision plat as lot number one. <clears throat> 
this will essentially take that lot number one and move it from the Beretta property and incorporate it into the Penco property. Um, there are two variances that were granted for this uh, because the remaining parcel, Beretta parcel, will be under the one acre required for the EDC district. Uh, so they received a variance to the lot size for the remaining parcel and also to the site setback for that existing medical building will only be 10 feet from the property line as opposed to the 25, which is required. So variances are granted for both of those so long as the subdivided lot is fully incorporated into the Penco lot. Um, other than that, it meets all the other requirements of our subdivision and zoning ordinances and the Planning Commission and the County Planning Commission both recommended for approval. Any questions from council? I take it you're expanding? Future. Awesome. Yeah. We're out of room now, so this is just give us an option to expand in the future. Any more no, uh, where is that? Yeah. Any other questions? Roll call. Roa? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Battaglia? Aye. Mandela Whitner? Aye. Stern? Aye. If you'd like to take off, you're welcome to. Or you're welcome to stay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Andy went through the ball back to you. All right, thanks, Ryan. Uh, so, in no particular order, a number of uh, sort of updates and topics as part of my report. Um, council will recall that a few months ago we were host to um, Morgan LeBleu, a student from Feen who was just here on personal travel and visit. Uh, but we have the opportunity this summer. Uh, for seven or eight years running, the city of Fiend France has hosted two Allegheny College students for two or three weeks each year in an internship that they spend there. Um, we have the opportunity this summer that we are hosting Meatville, hosting um, a student. Um, her name is Agathe, which is sort of Agatha, and she will be here from July 9th through July 30th, and she'll spend time at Allegheny College, a few days here at the city building, working on our theme uh, materials and um, interpreting our sister city relationship and she'll also be working at Beville High School. Um, we'll host her at our July 17th council meeting um, as a guest um, and she'll be in various home stays and um, traveling and, and working here this summer for about three weeks. So we're looking forward to her visit and continuing that partnership with the city of Fiend. Um, the HP Way Park construction project, the pre-construction meeting for that is on June 28th. Um, we'd already awarded the contract to TerraWorks, um, so I think the notice to proceed has been issued. This is just the next step in getting them ready to mobilize for the project. Uh, I guess we'll learn more at that meeting in terms of time frame and timetable, but we're glad to see that moving forward. Uh, at our last meeting, Mr. Christopher Brody was here to uh, talk about a sidewalk removal request. Um, I provided information to council <coughs> in the packet in my notes. Um, we do have uh, the article that um, pertains, we have an ordinance and a process that pertains to sidewalk removal, um, and I provide that information to council just by way of um, education. And Gary has reached out or will reach out to Mr. Brody, ask him to make the formal request, and then we'll review it right back to council for further discussion. Um, you'll recall last year during budget season, last actually November and December, we were looking at um, potentially transitioning our health care delivery for our employees and our health care benefits to PIMIC, the Pennsylvania Municipal Health Insurance Cooperative, <clears throat> uh, which is administered by a third party Benecon. Uh, we were really seriously examining that, looking at some cost savings, um, but ultimately we decided that it was too late in the year um, and they actually wouldn't accept us into the membership of the cooperative because we were a health, uh, Highmark healthcare company and they work exclusively with United. We are beginning to, ahead of budget season, revisit that uh, that option. Uh, we met with United Healthcare or had a conference call with our broker at United Healthcare just last week, um, and so we'll be bringing more information to council. I think we decided at our August meeting uh, probably have a new presentation from Benecon, again in preparation and examining that as a good option for budget season. Um, just a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, Council um, Mary Ann hosted along with the County Planning Office a, the first public hearing for the Community Development Block Grant funds. Um, I was not in attendance, but I understand there were um, obviously some discussion really about two sort of recreation opportunities in parks and park improvements, maybe specifically uh, the term splash pads, right, sort of water-based or fountain-based play areas. 
Um, there's going to talk about transportation, maybe to the mark for recreation opportunities. Um, in the next probably two months anyhow, probably by September, we'll need to narrow down what it is, and actually sooner so that we can begin the, the application, the compliance process to qualify activities for our next application, which will be due probably in early October. Um, we're going to need to narrow down what those activities are. Um, I just want to remind council that you know we've used historically we've used CDBG funds for infrastructure related um, projects, paving where we can. So projects where we'd either have to expend money out of our general fund or or borrow money. Um, obviously, we know our budget's tight, um, and so I, I encourage council to look at projects that. Um, it makes me nervous, frankly, in the recreation assets, though, though those are important things we want to maintain our parks. I'm concerned about adding new infrastructure and our ability to maintain that going forward. So I guess I want to continue the dialogue around what those proposed CDBG activities will be. Um, Waldy Court has been closed. Waldy Court is the alley behind um, the pharmacy. Walgreens. Walgreens. And, and uh, adjacent to Meadville Medical Center's parking lots, um, portions of that alley have been closed for, gosh, nearly a year, probably nine months anyhow. Um, and reconstruction uh, and certain spot repair of that culvert began this week. Um, and actually might have, by Friday, I think, might have the final pour. Early next week, we'll pave. So we're, we'll be wrapping those up. There might be another section we'll need to address in short order. Um, and so while we're doing spot repair, I just want to remind council, you'll recall that we had a million dollar construction estimate from Board of Consulting Engineers just to reconstruct that portion of the culvert. Um, it really does, long term, we need to be looking at that, um, or at least evaluating options, but right now we're doing the, the Band-Aid repair. Um, but uh, that's underway right now. So that'll open the alley all the way back up again then? It will, it will. Um, but we'll be monitoring and evaluating for other repairs as needed. Also, in the world of infrastructure, Council is aware of the, quote, Baldwin Street sinkhole that had opened up. Um, ultimately, we determined that that was caused by, there's, a, there's an old cut sandstone culvert beneath Baldwin Street there. It's actually beautiful handiwork that was done probably over 100 years ago. It has an arched stone top to that culvert. By and large, that culvert's in good shape, but what we've determined the cause of that was we have a 30-inch stormwater line that comes in from the south. It actually bucks grade on Baldwin Street, comes into that culvert. Um, we believe that th that carries a tremendous volume of stormwater, um, that, that line does. It's a very large system that it conveys. We surmise that the, the outfall of that pipe continually scoured the opposite wall of the stone culvert, which then slowly undermined material from this side of the culvert, creating the void here that then created the void that then collapsed the sanitary sewer line. Um, so I, I want to give thanks to Wilkinson Excavating, who worked on, uh, as a contractor. It was a very deep hole. We didn't have the equipment um, to uh, large enough to do that. Um, that was about an $8,300 repair bill. Uh, for their work for the repair of the sanitary line and the excavation and backfill. Our crews did the blacktop work. Um, but the next phase of that project, what we're looking at is we also found that the condition of the 30-inch pipe that comes in from the south is in not great condition. It's a large pipe, it's very deep. Uh, we're looking at various options. One of them is to line that pipe. Um, and it's a specialty process that would be to provide structural lining. That comes with an estimated fifty thousand uh, dollar price tag. Um, so we're we're looking at the various options of what we. Where, how long is that line? Um, you know the thirty inch line. Yeah. Um, it's probably from the manhole that at the bottom of Prospect. I don't know, hundred. Oh. Hundred. Yeah, we had some discussion about that when they did the street over. Remember talking about that sandstone culvert? The culvert we, yeah, the culvert culvert we discussed. The culvert was in pretty good shape. I mean, the structure of the culvert's fine. It's that one spot where it appears to have been scoured from, from the discharge of that pipe is where the issue appears to have come. And then we had, you might recall, we, on the slope, the upstream slope, we did a slope stabilization joint right. project with PennDOT where we just benched into the bank, put gavians, and then erected the new fence. Um, the slope was fine. You know, we, we corrected that issue and concern, but um, it was really that scouring from that stormwater pipe that seems to have caused the void on the opposite side of that culvert. Well, that 30-inch pipe brings water down from up by your place, up by the, the water tower. 
all the way down Park Avenue and the down Cross The stormwater Avenue. system that that pipe conveys begins at Hamilton Avenue and North Main Street, collects all the way down North Main Street, Limber uh, Road, cuts across Allegheny College's campus, collects a portion of Park Avenue, heads all the way down Prospect Street, and then up Baldwin Street and discharges into that culvert. It's a really large stormwater system that that pipe conveys. Is that, does that go across Loomis? There's a whole bunch of infrastructure there yeah. in Loomis that, mm -hmm. with big manholes and stuff. It doesn't go, that section, that particular segment doesn't go down that far okay. south on North Main. It, um, really right in front of Baldwin Hall um, is where it cuts across Allegheny's campus. And Andy, if we could also thank Westmead Township because they uh, provided the paving, um, actually stopped one of their pro uh, projects to come in on uh, on Monday to do Baldwin Street. So we want to make sure we thank them for their time and effort in doing that. Yes. Um, we reviewed last meeting the Solicitor and Transient Retail Ordinance, a draft of that. Uh, Councilman Roa did provide a number of comments that he asked staff, staff to review. Uh, we do have an internal staff meeting set up, I think, next week to review that. So uh, and I did <coughs> provide his comments to all the council. So we'll continue to review and discuss that and bring it back to council. Uh, we also discussed Doty Road, um, and it remains closed from Laird to North Main Street right now. Um, our crews were actually in there today and were able to excavate the upper end of the culvert. We've at least opened up the culvert so that um, we're concerned that we've obviously had lots of rain, but we're expecting a lot more tomorrow up to an inch of rain, so we've at least opened up so water can enter that culvert. But we still don't know. We've not fully excavated under the street yet to know what the issue that caused the void under the street is. So. Anyhow, we still have exploration work to do there. Um, but we had talked about, staff had provided council with a recommendation to consider the closure of that section of Doty Road. Um, so we've, Gary has prepared a, we want to get input and a survey information from the neighborhood. So Gary has a draft survey that we're going to get out here hopefully soon uh, for the planning commission who will review that at their August meeting. They, I think they don't have a meeting in July, but they'll meet in August. So. Um, We'll continue that. Uh, I think last meeting I reported to you that the aerial ladder truck from the fire department is going to become back in service. It is now back in service from um, some damage that had been done and has been repaired and welded. Uh, we've now sent off our engine um, and we had thought it was actually a transmission problem. Turns out it's more engine related so we're taking it down to Cranberry tomorrow to a specialty garage. Um, has a number of issues, oil leak, exhaust leak, a coolant leak, some other things going on. So uh, we'll have a better sense of that in a few days in terms of the extent of its. How old is that vehicle, Andy? Dates in 1991. Um, eight years old. So we really do need to, I think, prioritize looking at the replacement of that vehicle. Um, and that might well be something we want to consider under the Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, and and that, we, that is an eligible expense that we can accumulate multiple years of, probably at least two years of funding for that. and. Uh, so that's one of the options that we'll look and bring to council. Could we apply for any grant monies to help try to offset the cost? We do have a, a grant application pending and haven't heard it's a federal grant. Okay. The, the competition for those dollars is fierce. I'm not terribly optimistic that we'll be successful there, but we do. We have been trying to grant fund for that as well. What's the ballpark cost of a new one? Half a million dollars. Half a million. Uh, the cleanup day, I told you we would have, so cleanup day back on May 12th, I do have the final stats there. So we, between 7.30 in the morning and noon, we received 79 vehicle loads. Um, in our expenses between dumpsters and overtime labor for our employees, we had $3,933 in expenses. Revenue between the vehicle, $10 per load fee of $790 plus scrap metal brought in $1,009. Uh, so just net cost of $2,900 for the um, cleanup day held back on May 12th. And how did it work out having the truck down on Market Street for the public to bring stuff to? So there, no one participated in that day. We did park a truck for our community-wide cleanup. There, there wasn't anything in that truck. If we want to do that in the future, we'll just need to plan sooner and, and promote and, um, okay. yeah, in terms of making it more of a community-wide downtown cleanup. And we did not have one on Park Avenue, correct? That was the one that, they, the one that was down at the market house 
they talk about putting on Park Ave. That's it was on Market Street. It was parked on Market Street at the DEP building. I don't know about Park Avenue. Okay. It was, um, so 16.2 tons of refuse collected in that day. Put a thousand dollars in scrap metal. Yeah, that's what. No, no, that's not. No. Seven ninety. So seven hundred ninety vehicle loads be two hundred and twenty dollars in scrap metal. Oh, okay. For a total of thousand dollars in revenue, thousand ten dollars in revenue. About two hundred and ten. Yeah. So it's just down a little bit from the previous year, then. Uh, it yeah. is. Yep. Participation down in terms of vehicle loads. I received outreach and I have not yet forwarded it to council. So Jim, uh, Dave Miller, who is a local citizen, who is a member of um, the Crawford County Chapter of Fair Districts PA, has provided information about uh, districting, redistricting, redistric gerrymandering. Um, there's he's requested to to come to a council meeting. There's a resolution. I need to follow up with Dave and ask him to. Um, I'm not sure how council wants to proceed, but um, I'm going to ask him to maybe write a letter to request to be on an agenda because that's essentially what he's requesting information he's provided me. I just need to follow up with him. So I imagine we'll hear from him. Wouldn't soon. he be doing better? And just my thinking uh, to contact the state representatives since they're the ones that make <laughs> those decisions. He's going after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can recommend that. I mean, that's. I mean, I think that's one thing we should recommend. I mean, often one of the. Of course, the strategies is to get a number of constituents to adopt policies or resolutions to help convince their legislators to act and, and to uh, decide in a certain manner. But um, I'll, um, I'll, I think I'll ask him to provide a formal request, and then the council can decide whether you want to have it on an agenda. We don't. The only one I can remember in recent history of doing something like that is when Mike was talking about Newspaper Week there. So had an interesting thing, but I don't think, I can't remember anybody coming in to promote uh, stuff like that. Similar for when they wanted to, to, they wanted to do the... Uh, radar enforcement? Yep, yeah, radar enforcement. Yeah, yeah. we've, um, the Pennsylvania Municipal... Well, I, that, that would be of interest to the city. Right. right. But, but this in general is not specifically a, something that the city would have a great interest in. I, you know, I, I'm looking for a reason so we, we're doing something different, I think, here, if, if we do that. <clears throat> I'd like to see them contact the state legislation first, because they're the ones that make the decision, not the local council members. I guess before we proceed, I mean, do you, are you at all interested? Is there a majority, I mean, are you by consensus, or as, are you interested in a presentation discussion on this, or do you want me to just tell Mr. Miller to? Um, you can come and see us, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, maybe just give us some more information on it so we have a little bit more background so when he does come that we have some I'll distribute helpful it. information to give him. Uh, and then I think lastly on my list, uh, so our next meeting would be Wednesday, July 3rd. Um, for a few years running based on um, agendas, staff schedules, vacation time, we have canceled that meeting. Um, so looking at our agenda planning internally, we don't have anything on our agenda that requires the immediate action at that meeting. I myself will be on vacation that week. Um, and I believe actually Gary Lizio might be on vacation that week or unavailable anyhow. And I'll um, be gone. I def you'll be gone too? I will be gone. Is there going to be staff's recommendation to cancel that meeting and then just continue with our July 17th meeting, but I defer that to council. Okay, yeah. I mean, we've done that in the past. Do you need a motion? Yeah, this is motion. Second. Second, Your Honor. Discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Roa? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Pataglia? Aye. Mangel Bittner? Aye. Stearns? Aye. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Um, one other thing, Marianne, I think when we were talking at the CBG uh, the public hearing, that we asked to get some information. I know you gave some information on the splash lagoon. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could. I'm not sure where we left that, to be honest. I saw the number, but. Do you want to share? I mean, so just share the basic research that you've done so far. Uh, so, Titusville is the closest location to actually recently implement a splash pad. I reached out to them. They replaced their entire municipal pool uh, with a splash pad to a cost of $595,000. Um, the removal of the pool 
was not the majority of the budget. The splash pad itself cost about three hundred and ninety thousand oh, dollars. Um, and from what I understand, that actually isn't the final cost of the project. That was the estimate, and it came in well over that. They've used their CDBG funds, I know, for at least a few years. You're running the same thing that they've mm -hmm. accumulated funds to have to implement that project. Did they have any type of grant money that went along with it to offset the cost? No, they just used um, three years of CDBG funding. How much did they get? I don't. I don't know. I can check and see what their allotment is. You might get. Did they, do you know what the, did they get? What um, I would suspect it probably be a little bit less than us. Um, they probably were under court order to fix the streets, though, for how many years? <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think I'm not aware that they've been <laughs> under the ADA. Yeah, yeah. Kind of took right. care of our money for a couple of years. Um, just, I mean, splash pads are fully engineered. They require filtration. They require chemical treatment. I mean, because of um, fencing, of course, because you can't have pets and other things, you know, in those areas. So they, they are fully engineered, you know, recreation amenities. Almost as bad as having a swimming pool. I'm sorry? Sounds almost as bad as uh, having right. a swimming pool. Um, they require far less staffing, though. So I think really what, oh, yeah. what led to Titusville is that they just had a number, they had difficulty staffing and managing staff and adequately staffing for safety purposes. And because of the depth of the water and different um, scenarios, right, it's much easier to manage from a staffing perspective. Okay. Thank you. Uh, communications, Marianne. Uh, so there is a letter from Porter Consulting Engineers. It reads, Dear Council, the City of Meadville is applying to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection for a general permit number 11 to repair and replace an existing set of deteriorated steps along the Cora Clark Park Trail leading towards Neeson Run. Cora Clark Park is located within the City of Meadville, adjacent to the Crawford County Office of Emergency Services building along Upper Pine Street. The permit is required due to a portion of the stairway replacement being located within 50 feet of the top of Bank of Mason Run in accordance with the PADP Bureau of Waterways, Engineering, and Wetlands General Permit Requirements. A copy of the General Permit Registration Form and Location Maps are included for your reference. Thank you. Council, I'll just note that's our own project. We had received grant money through Crawford County's Act 13 program to repair and replace or replace those steps, right? Um, and so that's a project we'll be getting underway this season as well. All right. Uh, nothing under old business, new business. Uh, trick or treat. A little early, but yes, better than the most important than decision late. you make as a body. Um, <laughs> I thought I would always get this, just get this on our radar screen early. Um, because we've already had one phone call about it, frankly. Um, so the historical formula for trick or treat in Meadville has always been the Thursday before the Halloween parade, which has always been the last Saturday prior to Halloween. Um, this year, the Halloween parade will be held, and we've already had the pre-planning meeting with the KCs for the Halloween parade just two weeks ago. So um, Halloween parade will be Saturday, October 26th. Under the formula I just described, typically trick-or-treat would be on the 24th. Uh, however, this year Halloween itself falls on a Thursday, the 31st of October, um, and there's been an inquiry of when we would like to schedule trick-or-treat. I did talk to the Meadville Police Department, and typically we have to staff overtime both for trick-or-treat, obviously, um, and then Halloween night we will as well because there's usually some shenanigans that happen downtown. Um, and if we would do both trick-or-treat night on Thursday the 31st, which is obviously earlier in the evening, and then typically shenanigans happen later at night, we would have the same level of staffing available. Um, and so they're comfortable that if we did do them both the evenings, we would have the staffing and, and maybe even save a few dollars in terms of overtime staffing. Historically, the school was closed on Friday, one of those Fridays. It, <coughs> if they hold their form, and I did not check their schedule, it would have been Friday the 25th. Yeah. Well, um, we should. Weren't they the ones that actually contacted you? <laughs> no, no. So years ago, this was when Charlie Heller was the superintendent. I did call him once and said, you know, urban legend has it that you don't want kids in school the next day after trick or treat. And he says, Andy, we really don't care when trick or treat is. It doesn't really impact our schedule, and it's not something that we're worried about. That was Charlie Heller 
five years ago or something. Not speaking on behalf of the teachers who have to yeah. deal with the children with sugar uh, all day long. But or what are you suggesting? The 31st have uh, trick or treat and the parade on the No, Sunday? no, just that the parade will be will be on Saturday, October 26. I'm just suggesting okay. that we could have trick or treat on the 31st on Halloween itself. Oh, I suggested wow. that one year, yeah. and I got hell help. for that for quite a long time. The thing is, the later it gets, it seems like those poor kids are out there. I mean, it's nasty sometimes. It would be the same, would sold at the same hours, right? From yeah, but it would be a week before if you did it on the 24. It would. Your call. I just think the later we go. There's an extra 14 minutes of daylight on the 24th. Yeah. <laughs> it's colder. 14 minutes. Yeah, that's two what I said. Per day. And these yeah. kids go yeah. without coats. And... Uh, that's. I don't know. They might get a kick out of doing it actually on Halloween. Yeah. I don't know. Boy, what a decision. Sounds like we might have a second on this. Because <laughs> I always thought we should have Halloween on the 31st when it is Halloween. Elizabeth has <laughs> confirmed that Crawford Central's calendar has the 25th day, the day of school. Is they have the awesome off. Right. I'd like to leave it the way it is now. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think I we think should so. leave it on the 24th. Those kids are off the next day. That's probably good for all the Whatever decision you make is wrong. Guys. Whatever decision you make will be wrong, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> the later we go, the colder it is. Less daylight. I, I, yeah, I have, we got to watch out for It's safer to have it earlier. Yeah, I think so, too. Very good. Do you want a motion or are you doing it comfortable by consensus? So moved. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Roth, Donahue, Battaglia, Angela Bittner, Aye. Stearns. Aye. Don't close. put my phone number next to <laughs> One of these days we're going to get it on the 31st. <laughs> so you've already taken care of letter B then, Penco subdivision. Okay. okay. So we are down to C. C. Um, Resolution authorizing signatures from March and <coughs> Meadville Summer Parks Program Agreement. Marianne? Resolved by the Council of the City of Meadville that the attached agreement is hereby approved and adopted as for a binding and effective agreement of the City of Meadville in accord with its terms, and the Mayor, Controller, and City Clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute and to attest such copies of the attached agreement in the manner required by law as may be reasonably required for the purposes of the parties thereto, authorized signatures, Summer Parks Program Agreement, City of Meadville and Meadville Area of Recreation Authority. Motion, please. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. Andy, I think I'm going to lead off with it, if you don't mind. Sure. <coughs> um, so a little bit of the history, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, last year, the agreement was with uh, Creative Landscaping. Like Creative yeah. Landscapes, yep. Yeah. Okay. So this year it's going under the mark, Meadville Area Recreation Authority, correct? Yes. So when I was asked to have this put on the uh, last meeting agenda, uh, it was kind of like at the 11th hour, and the agreement um, being under a municipality is different than being under a nonprofit. So we weren't able to add that to the agenda at the time because it had to be rewritten through our solicitor and check. So um, in doing so, I also contacted Westmead and Vernon Township. We have a good relationship with them. And I was curious how they did theirs, and they both did theirs differently. One went actually under a rental agreement, as it would be using a shelter, um, was Westmead. And Vernon said it was just a short period of time, one day a week that for the first year they were just going to go ahead and treat it as somebody just using the park. So um, I asked Andy to go ahead and get the agreement prepared to have it put tonight before council. So that's kind of the history of it, which I'm in support of the, the program. I just want to make sure our documents are correct and the procedures are followed. And you know, this is just a simple agreement that mostly addresses sort of um, responsibilities that have background checks for um, volunteers and employees. Um, the program is slated for Wednesdays at Heide Cooper Park from noon to four and Thursdays at Shady Brook Park from noon to four uh, and basic insurance and indemnification language. And you guys have looked at this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I participated in the drafting of this last year and then familiarized myself with the modifications this year and I would concur that it's mainly a listing of rights and responsibilities and delegation of who's co who's responsible for which coverage. Um, so I'm most comfortable with it in this version. 
Okay. Has the REC authority approved this yet? No, they're doing it tomorrow. Uh, their meeting is on Friday, and it is on their agenda. Um, and I had actually, you'll see that the signature for, um, on the signature block is for Aaron Ruckage, the executive director. And I had inquired, Aaron's recently the executive director, has been recently made, and I had inquired whether he had authority to execute the agreement. And I also understand that there will be a resolution on their agenda to provide them with authority to enter into this agreement, perhaps others, at the policy of the Recreation Authority. It has usually been our practice to ratify agreements after the other parties have approved them. That is often our practice when we can accommodate that. That's how we prefer, right? That uh, the opposite party with whom we're entering but into we're not agreements. we're going to be back in session until after. In July, right. <laughs> I guess the question is if we can move to authorize signatures subject to ratification. And if they approve it Friday morning, uh, we can sign it immediately after. Well, when, when's the first time that you're I wrote it down? Uh, the agreement's structured to be uh, dated with the date of Monday, just the uh, Monday of next week. To start? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's the date of the agreement that under their schedule that they're proposing, it, they would operate on Wednesday. So the soonest would probably be Wednesday of next week. Because I'll come in Friday and sign it. We get the comp control order to come in and sign it. I just don't want to put it behind. I mean, summer will be. Well, it's over August. Did I say August 2nd or something? Yeah. So yes. if you don't do it. <laughs> so if council is agreeable, um, once they sign it, I'll, I'll come in Friday, Andy. Yeah, August And then I'll sign it and get the comp control order signed. Do we need to amend the motion? To that effect. So moved. Second. Second, Your Honor. Discussion on the motion. Any other questions? So, Andy, as soon as they, we get an okay from the mark, then I'll come in and I'll sign this so the program can start. Then. Basically, they couldn't have any amendments. Yeah, no, they can. Uh, well, that's that's stick why to this. we do it last. That's last, be great. Last. So, Andy, we might want to make sure they understand that they don't change. Well, I mean, there's no them. reason to think they're going to, but right. no, but we might want to make sure they yeah. don't. I mean, they may think of something, and then it would end up going to another meeting. So, okay. So, we all agree on that then. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Umbrella. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Battaglia. Yeah, aye. Angel Whitner. Aye. Sir. Aye. Um. Resolution authorizing signatures for the City of Maidville and the United States Department of Agriculture and Natural Resource Conservation Service. Rainbow Dam. That's a lot. Okay. Resolved by the Council of the City of Maidville that subject to solicitor's final approval, the attached agreement is hereby approved and adopted substantially in the form attached here to as and for finding an effective agreement of the City of Meadville in accord with its terms. And whereas authorizing signatures does not authorize implementation of the rehabilitation of Rainbow Lake Dam or commit funding to such implementation at this time, and the mayor, controller, and the city clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute and to attest such copies of the attached agreement in the manner required by law as may be reasonably required it, required for the purposes of the parties thereto. Authorized signatures, Rainbow Dam Supplemental Watershed Agreement Number 4, USDA and City of Meadville. Motion to. So moved. Authorizing. Second. Second, Your Honor. Discussion, Andy. Uh, just by way of, of background. So this, um, obviously we've been in a multi-year process and evaluation process with the USDA and our CS. It started several years ago who had, had done an assessment and evaluation, looked at various alternatives, what, you know, what's the cost of removing the dam and relocating a bunch of people. Um, and council has already, by resolution, essentially proceeded back then with the rehab option. Um, this agreement essentially selects the rehab option um, as that when and if we move to rehab and towards construction that we're choosing the rehab option. This allows then USDA to proceed with the design of the rehab option. So they've actually, um, we already have the money secured for design. Uh, there's no local match for that. So they would go out once this is approved and essentially we formally adopted the design or the, the rehab in place option. Um, I think I'd reported at an earlier meeting a couple of months ago that you'll recall in the discussion, this is a very complicated discussion in the Tamarack Lake Dam, right? Where, where we released 
the USDA had to release their federal interests, allow that land to be constructed to state standards. Um, the concern was by doing so, would our dam have to be over fortified, over engineered, if you will, and increase our cost uh, by doing so. The USDA National Office has released us from that over what I'll call over engineering uh, requirement. So they've given us a variance to have to comply um, to address the breach wave of the state dam, et cetera. So, so this is the option that, that we're adopting by this agreement is that rehab option without the sort of over fortification of the dam. Um, again, we're just choosing that option. We're not agreeing to move forward with it, but this allows USDA to proceed with the design of it. <coughs> What's different from the uh, version that you had in your packet, uh, item number six on here, um, it was, there's, it's titled in the draft before you land treatment conservation measures. Um, and I had some concern and, and um, Shape a Law Firm and I, and then in conversation with, with USDA and RCS, we, um, this used to have language that we were required to enter into agreements with landowners upstream for, to, to conduct conservation measures. Um, this language now just requires that, um, that we as a sponsor will work with um, conservation partners to ensure that existing conservation measures are, are in place. There's no requirement to enter into any agreements with landowners upstream. Um, and so with that change, I, I felt pretty comfortable with um, where this is headed and what happens next. Okay. Do you know when they're going to start filling Tamarack, or have they? Do you know that, any background or any update on that? They had to drain it all first. But before they could start filling it, they had to drain everything out to get the invasive species out. I don't think they've been able to do that because of the rain. All the rain. There's a ceremony tomorrow. Is there? To start filling? Oh, okay. Good deal. There must be Is that a rain dance? Yeah. They're going to fill it. Fill it. <laughs> they, they could forego that. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Andy on that? So I'll note there's about 70 pages of information that follow this agreement, which is all the assessment and evaluation that tells the story of ending at that rehab of the dam in place. You read every one of those. I know you have. We, over, over the last five years, in some form or fashion, we have, yes. <laughs> Roll call. Roa. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Taglia. Aye. Angela Bittner. Aye. Stearns. Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing signature for community foundation of the Alleghenies in the city of Meadville, Maryland. Resolved by the Council of the City of Meadville that the attached agreement is hereby approved and adopted as a core binding and effective agreement of the city of Meadville in accord with its terms, and the mayor, controller, and city clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute and to attest such copies of the attached agreement in the manner required by law as may be reasonably required for the purposes of the parties thereto. Authorized signatures, grant agreement, community foundation of the Alleghenies and city of Meadville, energy efficiency upgrades for LEDs. Motion. Okay. Second. 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 Discussion, Andy. Uh, Council, you authorized signatures on the grant application for this a few months ago. Um, it was a, we requested $20,346, but were granted uh, 17350 uh, This is to purchase bulbs and conversion kits. So all of our, in most cases, it's our decorative lighting. So on Chestnut Street, the Diamond Park, um, and there's other locations, but most of it is decorative lighting, the conversion kits and lamps to convert to LED lighting. Um, and we report at the time that after conversion is complete, we anticipate saving up to $11,000 a year and ongoing electric uh, operational costs. Um, so we're excited and thankful to, I'm grateful to staff, uh, both Bennett and Debbie work uh, on the grant application along with Chuck Larson to get all the quoting in place for this. Um, our match will be our labor, so it'll be Chuck Larson and our staff that will begin the conversion, but all the materials are essentially being uh, provided by this program. Uh, uh, number of lights are we talking about? Uh, of course you would ask that. I'm sorry. <laughs> 300 city-owned street lights on roadways, parking lots, city parks. Uh, about 300, 300 lights. How many total lights do we have? About triple that? No, um, we're not. Those aren't the street lights. Uh, so the Penelac owned street lights run by Penelac. So this this number is probably close to what we own. Is there any chance of getting Penelac to retrofit? 
there are lights. We've begun that. So on Park Avenue in the vicinity of Allegheny College, they will do, I believe, 10 at a time. They'll take six, nine, 12 months to do those 10 at a time. Um, we have about 1,100 of those citywide. My understanding um, and memory is they put them in, but we pay the electric. That's correct. So we'd save some money. And we pay tariff rates that are set by the PUC. And what has changed is that the, the the LED lighting tariff rate um, they've raised, and so the savings, and we have no control over that, right? But the savings now in, in LED lighting and street lighting have been dramatically reduced. I think there's probably still savings to be had, but dramatically reduced because the PUC has raised that tariff rate um, and what we pay. So, so how does that work? It's, that's like a tax on LED lights, or who gets that money? Not Penelac. Sure. So the, the Penelac has to submit their rate for approval to the PUC, yeah. and then the PUC approves that rate. That I understand. Right. But why, what's the tariff though? It must be. The, the, that's tariff? Called, the rate that they submit is their tariff. Oh, oh okay. That's, what, right. they, that's right. what their so rate it's is. Their tariff. Uh, correct. Uh, okay. No, I understand. Right. Um, so we are. We still are working. We have a whole inventory. Jim of, of those and, and we've been slowly requesting Penelac to to change those over and that is a goal of ours as well. There's savings to be had, it's just not as dramatic as it looked initially. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Roll call. Roll up. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Battaglia. Aye. Angel Bittner. Aye. Stern. Aye. Resolution authorizing signature by Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, in the Department of Transportation, the City of Mayville, Marianne. Resolved by the Council of the City of Mayville that subject to solicitor's final approval, the attached agreement is hereby approved <coughs> and adopted substantially in the form attached here to as and for binding and effective agreement of the City of Meadville in accord with its terms. And the Mayor, Controller, and City Clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute and to attest such copies of the attached agreement in the manner required by law as may be reasonably required for the purposes of the parties thereto, authorized signatures, general reimbursement agreement, grant agreement, federal aid, highway projects, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania DOT and City of Meadville in the amount of $1,136,190. Okay. Motion to accept. So moved, Your Honor. Second? All, all second. Discussion, Andy? This is also a very lengthy agreement that legal counsel has reviewed. Um, lots of terms and conditions of accepting federal funds, but uh, we've talked about this is the local federal aid route funding uh, for paving of Allegheny Street, Diamond Park, Leslie Road, Limber Road, um, portions of North Main Street and South Main Street. Um, and so this is federal funds that transfer that come through PennDOT for local for the paving of routes have been designated as local federal aid routes. Any questions for Andy? Roll call. Umbrella. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Metaglia. Aye. 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 Uh, resolutions authorizing submission of uh, auto red light enforcement. Area. Resolved by the Council of the City of Meadville that the attached agreement is hereby approved and adopted as for a binding and effective agreement of the City of Meadville in accord with its terms. And the mayor, controller, and city clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute and test such copies of the attached agreement in the manner required by law as may be reasonably required for the purposes of the parties thereto. Authorized submission, automated red light enforcement, transportation enhancements, grant program application, intersect intersection radius improvements, arch and water street intersection, approximately $60,000. Motion to authorize signatures. So moved. Second. Second, Your Honor. Uh, Council, you're aware that we already have PennDOT grant funding from the Greenlight Go program to replace the <coughs> traffic signals at the three intersections on Water Street. Upon designing the Water and Arch Street intersection, um, the engineer came to us and asked, we've got issues on the turning radius of that turning lane, and we've got the opportunity, we've got the right of way, we have the opportunity to widen that radius uh, to make it easier for large vehicles, buses, Greyhound buses from the mall. <coughs> tractor trailer to make that without going up over the curb damaging curb and sidewalk um, and this is a uh, against my better judgment we're applying for more grant money for PennDOT is a full-time job working with PennDOT on these grant programs but there's an opportunity for grant funding which we think is competitive application that could help fund this particular improvement at that intersection 
Um, no local match by us. Our, our match would be the capital that we've already committed to the Green Light Go funding, so no, no additional match from the city. So if, if this doesn't get approved, then they don't do that? We'll look if we want to spend our own local capital to, to it might make sense to do it even if it's not grant funded, just because it's, it'll be a long-term yeah. that that's valuable. And it's only for this intersection, even though there are two other ones that we're upgrading. The, yeah, the Green Light Go apartment is doing all three intersections traffic signals. This is just, this particular application is just for this turning radius at this one intersection. There's some utility relocation that which drives the cost here. That's the. That's what, uh, it's not as simple as just pulling back the curb and sidewalk. There's relocating some utilities that would have to happen. But they don't have any issues with the uh, center street there, where they go into Tops Market and the mall. There, that seemed like a bigger problem for semis. And a much more expensive project uh, <laughs> in terms of taking an eminent domain that's probably beyond the scope of our abilities. Well, yeah. <coughs> Any other questions for Andy? Roll call. Roa. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Taglia. Aye. Major Whitner. Aye. Stearns. Aye. Uh, resolution awarding bid transfer lane in Linden Street. Marianne. Whereas bids for construction of concrete straight curbs on Chancery Lane and Linden Street in the city of Meadville was advertised in the Meadville Tribune and due on Tuesday, June 18, 2019. And whereas Public Works Support Coordinator Jeannie Smith reviewed the bids and per the bid recommendation letter dated June 19, 2019, recommended the city award the project to Guzik Concrete Masonry. Now therefore be resolved that the city of Meadville by and through the council of the city of Meadville hereby awards the bid to Guzik Concrete and Masonry in the amount of $99,705. Be it further resolved, the mayor, controller, and city clerk are authorized and directed to execute any and all documents and agreements necessary to complete the construction of concrete straight curb on Chancery Lane and Linden Street. Motion to award the bid. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Second. <laughs> Discussion, Andy. Uh, I'll just note that um, so the source of the funds for this, and I believe this is probably our last contract that we're awarding this construction season, um, is. Um, proposed to take this out of our own capital borrowing funds. So we've obviously, we under, we've augmenting our paving by a million dollars from PennDOT, which gives us more flexibility in our capital. Um, in any place where we're doing paving, I'm really pushing our staff to address curves. I mean, you get one bite of the apple for the next 15 or 20 years in, in terms of addressing curves and conditions of curves. And so uh, we're trying where we're paving to um, really upgrade the curves, and that's what we're doing here with this one class project on Chancery and Linden Street. Any questions for Andy? Roll call. Rilla. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Battaglia. Aye. Major Bittner. Aye. Stearns. Aye. Council member statement. John, I'll start with you tonight. Me? Yeah. Uh, we, we won't uh, meet again before the 1st of July, so everybody have a pleasant 4th and do what you do, but more importantly, some of our citizens celebrate Juneteenth, which is today. Yes. And uh, you know, if you do that, have a nice thought for, for prayer for people who made that possible. <laughs> Thank you. Sean? Uh, I'd, just, I'd just like to say I attended the uh, concert they had at the Mark. And it was, uh, it was the only day it didn't rain, I think, in the last three weeks, and then locked out. But uh, it was really nice, and there was a lot of people there. So it's really growing, and uh, there's a lot of nice things going on up at the Red Cup. Good. John? John. Uh, yeah. um, Jim, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have two things. First, I'd like to congratulate the Meadville Volleyball team on winning the state championship. They did an excellent job. And I'd like to thank Channel Rock for continuing to invest in the region. Um, that's what we need the private sector investing providing jobs and stability for our communities. That's it, Your Honor. Okay, Nance? I would say ditto what Jim just said. He stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, happy fourth, everybody. Um, I just have a couple things I thought I'd mention. Um, if you remember last year, the market house had the uh, mobile market unit and council uh, <coughs> You know, yeah, remember it well. Gave uh, five thousand dollars. Well, this year we didn't have to give the five thousand, and they're doing it again. And um, they have a schedule here, and I just want to thank the the Market House Authority for allowing it because I think this is really going to reach people 
that have uh, doesn't have the ability to get the fresh fruit and vegetables. So um, I have a schedule. I would assume it's going to be on the market house. It starts the next Saturday at ten different locations. At ten different locations. Mm -hmm. That involved a lot of vouchers last year, which was a good idea. Yeah, we're going to have vouchers this year too. Good. The medical center okay. sponsoring at the uh, Toyota dealership out on the. Palmero. Uh, Palmero. Palmero is helping to sponsor. Well, that helped a lot because the, not not all of the markets accept them. You know, I think. Right. I think they have. It helps the local farmers too. They have um, aid farmers <coughs> up already. They hope to be self-sustaining. <coughs> but um, we got them started last year, and I think that was. I think it's a good thing. Well, uh, a few people stopped me, which they hardly ever do, but it's a, they appreciated that, yeah. that we had done something to, to make this possible. Yeah. Well, I, but I, I'm really proud of Market House for, for taking you on again. Um, uh, they did not ask uh, uh, for support from us, so that means that I think that they, uh, they uh, have a good program ready to go. And uh, the market team, it looks like they got I a great team. On that too. I, that too. I don't think, are, are we talking about restricting this again? Or? No, no, we have nothing to do with it. We don't, I don't think uh, that was a good idea. Tax dollars, uh, city tax dollars didn't go into this. So, but we wish them well and certainly have the community use it. So it's a good program. And I believe it's F at mobile market house at mob 326. Um, do we have this on our website at all? No, I've got I've got a hard copy posted on the bulletin board, I believe. But um, we, I'm sure it exists electronically. We can promote it via our Facebook page and website too. Okay. Just like to make sure everybody has the opportunity to know what's coming. So, and with that, I wish everybody a safe and happy fourth. And I'll be back after that. So, if I can have a motion to adjourn to an executive, so move, mm -hmm. oh, we have an executive session on on uh, probably litigation. Um, Gillingham versus City of Meadville and real estate related to possible acquisition of blighted property. Okay. Motion to adjourn to the second. So move your own. Second. Second. Roll call. Roa. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Battaglia. Aye. Angela Bittner. Stern. Aye. Adjourn the meeting. Please turn your cell phones back on so you make sure you get all your calls.